Okay. Welcome back. <laughs> so, actually, I, I didn't like the um, part that relates to humiliating learners because our role as teachers is not just to help them, I mean, pass specific course. Mm -hmm. We actually have to encourage them deal with them in an innocent uh, way. Because right. this will actually motivate them to learn. Because actually, motivation plays an important role in the process of uh, learning. So you, I, 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 I actually uh, felt that I am in the Middle Ages. You remind me of the fairy tales, right? So, but, um, I have to say that the strategies you have presented in this, uh, I mean, uh, in, in the session actually, can be uh, very uh, helpful for learners, for uh, adult learners, to uh, avoid anxiety. But how about teachers? Is there anything in your research that, uh, I mean, is related to how to encourage teachers to, I, I don't know the word actually, the suitable word, but to motivate uh, their uh, students rather than demotivate them. Because humiliation and, learner, uh, and learning actually do not mix. You know what I mean. Yeah. So, well, great, great question, yeah. yeah. Well, we asked, um, we, we also spoke with several, several teachers, and fortunately, fortunately for me, I am a um, university uh, deans and president of Southeast Asia. Thailand uses a transmission learning system. The teacher is the all-knowing, the be-all, the end-all of education, and the teacher, the teacher pours knowledge, well, not knowledge, information into the students. So. Uh, culturally, the students are students are not encouraged to ask questions because if if the students ask questions and if and if the teacher if the if the teacher feels threatened, then in Thai they say it's like twisting the threads of a screw. You know, it's making an ee -ee sound. So uh, culturally, culturally, the teacher runs their classroom almost like a, uh, uh, sorry, I'm translating to English, uh, almost like a mafia style system. I'm not, or itipon. And so the students, they're not encouraged to speak freely. Um, they're like a frog under a coconut shell. And uh, when they, you know, actually, actually, your question is so beautiful because I'm working on, I am the co-editor of a book and we're, we're, we're actually bringing this volume together and it is about critical pedagogy. And we found in Thailand that if critical thinking, if motivation is, is encouraged, then the society will squash that. The government will investigate the school if they promote critical thinking, you know, like Satit. Kamasat, Kamasat Secondary School, you know, they're promoting critical thinking, they're promoting freedom, they're promoting critical pedagogy, and the government does not, I mean, they actually not only not encourage, but they try to squash those type of free thinkers. So, Recording asking, in progress. Oh, oh well, good. I'm not going to say anything now that we're being <laughs> recorded. <laughs> no, yeah. So, but, you know, um, we, we, have, we have chapters from, from Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, Laos, and the education systems where the teacher is superior and the students are inferior, you're only going to see demotivation, you're going to see humiliation, you're going to see these, these things. And if you look at the Education First ratings, you know, the Education First English proficiency ratings, 
just see which countries are at the bottom, and you will see which education systems are more demotivating. So. Yeah, sounds fair. But actually, uh, apart from the, uh, I mean, uh, country policy concerning, I mean, uh, it's, I mean, policy that is related to education, I think uh, teachers can be, I mean, encouraged or learn how to, I mean, motivate their students and avoid simulation, right? This is my own point of view. Maybe, yeah. I mean, you can take the lead and uh, arrange for workshops uh, to enlighten uh, teachers in New Thailand. I mean, because uh, as uh, someone who has uh, such experience, I think you can manage it and promote the um, the idea of uh, respecting students and uh, um, I mean and motivate them, not to demotivate them by insulting or I mean such bad I mean methods that you have mentioned in your presentation. So you can go for it. Why not? Mm -hmm. so, and see? We, we can we, we can help you actually. We can help you in uh, conducting these workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apart, I, I'm not talking about the government policy. Yeah. So I'm talking about, I mean, how to, I mean, put teachers and students in uh, the right, on the right track. This is what I have in mind. It, well, it will be just a kind of, uh, not say instructions, not instructions, but guidelines. You as teacher, we, it, it's like, you know, a rule description. Okay, so teachers have to do one, two, three, four in classes. Right. Students have to uh, have to follow one, two, three, four in classes. And by doing this, I think the learning or teaching learning learning situation in Thailand will be certainly improved one day. This is what I have in mind. But just to, to investigate the phenomena and deal yeah. with this without offering, I mean, um, some uh, guidelines or solutions to the problem, this is this is not good. We have to participate as educators. So we actually have to, um, I mean, to help those uh, students. This is what I have in mind. We don't have to, I mean, say, okay, this is a phenomena, and so we not do anything. So we have actually to give them a hand. You know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I, I have the, I have your answer in in writing, but I know uh, Dr. Sidget, he had his hand up. Sorry, and then uh, he put his hand up three three times. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Parodin, um, anxiety in relation to speaking in foreign language, uh, I think, I think, is uh, affected by many factors. One of them can be um, the extent of exposure. When we talk about the extent of both the language, the language they are learning, whether the second or foreign language, um, it is related to generation. It is different across generations. My first son, for example, my first son, for example, uh, is much different from my generation which is much less exposed to English. My sons are more exposed to English language through social media. Therefore, therefore, uh, their anxiety are much less than what we experience um, to an extent. Second, it can be um, 
in re related to um, the social class. Because when we talk about social class, we talk about whether the generation can afford nowadays um, um, IT information and technology. I would like uh, you to comment on this based on your experience, based on the data you collected. Uh, Thank you. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, so very quickly. Uh, yeah. We looked at... Um, we looked at different different social structures. Uh, the participants in the participants in our first study, just like the participants in our second study, our second study has nearly two thousand participants. By the way, yeah, yeah. So we looked at different social classes, different education backgrounds, different provinces, different areas, different exposures to English. Uh, people from international programs, English. English programs. We looked at we looked at uh, as many different as many different demographic scenarios as we could. We wanted to have um, we we wanted to increase the validity of the study and the generalizability of the study. So we looked at all of these different areas. And yes, the young people they the young people are exposed to English more than the you know, Generation Z is exposed more than Generation X or Y, of course, yeah. But still, the edu we looked at the source. We looked at the source. And the source, even with the secondary students that, that we spoke to, the source of anxiety is still the same. It's still, it's still the same from, you know, the 1980s until now. It's still the same. So the education setting hasn't hasn't changed. So all right. Okay, I hope I answered your question. Dr. Marissa. Yes, Marissa. Hello. Yeah, thank evening. you. Good evening. Yes. And thank you very much, David, for a wonderful uh, presentation. And I, I really learned a lot. Yeah, especially when, when you summarized the uh, the reason why um, students have this kind of anxiety. And then you, you really uh, yeah, salamat po. <laughs> and especially the negative, uh, about the negative criticism. I agree with that because um, I still, so yeah, it's like Yasser when, when he mentioned that it reminded me of his past. It's the same to me because, but it's not in English, but it's in math now. So when yes. I was, uh, yeah, especially math, yeah, so it reminded me of those experiences anyway. So, um, yeah, and then also the uh, Sigit Sensei or Dr. Sigit also, I, you know, it reminded me of the social class because this is also very important. And then another thing is that, um, you know, when you mentioned about the ne negative criticism, and then you you uh, you you studied about the reason why, you know, so the reason why they have this kind of criticism. And then you mentioned about the bullying. Yeah, so bullying. So one of the stresses and the anxiety, the source of uh, anxiety of the students, is the teacher itself. Yeah. So how they. How they treat the students is a very, very uh, um, special factor to consider. Yeah, because, and another, I just want only to add, because in Japan it's a different um, environment, I, I guess. Which of course, uh, um, bullying probably is hidden. <laughs> it's kind of hidden. But, but the more, more important thing in Japan is, uh, you know, the, um, a part of negative criticism is the examination. Yeah? So exam, so that is one of the, uh, the factors that the uh, Japanese students are considering to be one of the factors that are very, very uh, impactful in, the, in learning English. Yeah. So um, for me, for me, because I saw it in Japan, um, but, um, I, we, we teachers have this special role to uh, motivate the students, as you mentioned, uh, Dr. Yasser a while ago. So that's why I try this... Uh, you know, the, in, the empathy. Now, so we have to create a right. very special uh, environment for the students. We have this kind of family environment. Uh, I mean, it is our role as a teacher to give this family-like environment to the, the students in order for them, to, for them to feel that they, you know, the classroom itself is an extension of their family, so that they will be able to to lessen their stress. Yeah. 
So um, I think this one is I think, the only thing I can share because you mentioned, Dr. Yafi, that you know, um, uh, David can, can be this kind of ways in order to, to lessen the stress of the students. Maybe that is also uh, one to be considered if ever, you know, there will be a workshop. Yeah. For, for the teachers to, <laughs> you know, for, for the teachers to, to, to change a bit their style of uh, teaching the students. And one is, I think, to, you know, to create a very good environment, a good environment, an effective environment for the students. Thank you. That's all. Oh, sorry, I just want only to add, David. I'm very yes. interested. You know, I'm interested about your cheat sheet. Oh yeah. Yeah, I really well, want. To see, I really want to see that cheat sheet. I might use that one. Yeah, yeah because do, do you have this kind of thing? I mean, yeah, file of that in order for us to know what, what is this all about. Yeah. No, actually, uh, or, you know, uh, actually, I uh, before the coronavirus pandemic. I would travel all around Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. I've touched most of the mm -hmm. 7,107 islands. And, you know, I've been exposed mm -hmm. to most of the 162 languages spoken, and that's not including the ethnic diversities. Um, but when I travel around the Philippines, when I speak, I speak very literal. I don't speak figuratively because I'm not a native Filipino speaker. So one time, uh, I learned how to say beautiful, delicious, and juicy. You know, it's talking about food. You know, like beautiful morning, maganda umaga, beautiful mm -hmm. evening, maganda gabi, uh, makatas, masarap. And, you know, so I wanted to taste some fruit. And, you know, fruit mm -hmm. is fruit is juicy, makatas, right? Mm -hmm. um, no, masarap, sorry. Um, and mm -hmm. tikman is taste. So I asked them, I asked someone if I can taste the juicy fruit. But asking mm -hmm. someone if you can taste their juicy fruit, it's actually sort of a euphemism. And you know, I didn't know that. Uh, so you know, when I try to speak another language, if I make a mistake, most of the time the native speaker of that language, they're very gentle. You know, they're like, oh, huh, that's, that, that's funny. Uh, but I, earlier, I alluded to a reason why I don't, why, why I can't read and write Thai very well. Um, I, you ask about a cheat sheet. Yes, I have to make a cheat sheet because I never formally learned how to read or write Thai. I took Thai classes several times, and every time I made a mistake, the teacher would become indignant or furious. So I would just leave the class, you know? I'm an adult, don't speak to me like, you know, like I'm like that, you know? So I didn't take Thai, I haven't taken Thai classes because I haven't found a comfortable environment. So, but the cheat sheet, I just write phrases that I need, or you know, if I'm going to, if I have to make a speech in Thai, I will write it, I I will write the speech in, I will write it phonetically using English letters. So, okay. yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, if you can pattern your uh, cheat sheets, probably you can also share it with, with our students here, and then we have this kind of pattern, how to, to oh. use the cheat sheet. No, it, no, there's no pattern, it's just as necessary. Yeah. Okay, so, so we, can, we can probably just use the term cheat sheet. Cheat sheet, I love it. Just yeah. let the students write anything they want to write. That's right, yeah. Cheat sheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I love well, the cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah. When I see eye to eye with uh, Dr. Melissa, actually, but you know what, Dr. Day, uh, Dr. David, I, I feel that learning a foreign language, I mean, whether it is English or Thai or anything, any language in Thai, uh, in Thailand is a big problem. Mm -hmm. This is this is this is what I have in mind <laughs> now. And it's it's uh, I mean it's awful to to know that in such countries uh, people are not encouraged to learn a foreign language. So I think you educators have to find a way in order to overcome this. I mean, I say fatal 
problem. It's not just a problem, but it is a fatal problem, actually. Yeah. Well, the British Council came in and they trained, uh, what, 20,000 teachers just recently, uh, before the coronavirus. They trained them on how to different tactics to teach English and uh, and I'm not sure exactly how successful it was because there hasn't been any there hasn't been a full study of the of the program but you mentioned uh, about implementing different teaching tech techniques to be more encouraging more motivating but that's that kind of goes against the grain you know there's a um, uh, uh, who, H-U, who did a study in uh, the early 2000s, 2002, 2003, and they found that in countries, uh, in countries that have trans transmission type education systems, like China or Thailand, that anything from the outside, any outsider type uh, teaching techniques or, or pedagogies, like communicative language teaching or CLIL, they're not accepted in that teaching system. And they said that, um, that although these methodologies are effective, although these methodologies are, are effective, they're only as effective to the extent that the teachers and students are willing to accept and implement these methodologies or pedagogies in good faith. And that these pedagogies are often not accepted because they go against the cultural standards. So when you have a transmission type system to where, you know, the teaching is very one-sided, uh, the students are afraid to ask questions, you know, they're afraid of retaliation, it's difficult for outsiders to come in and change that system. And, you know, I mean, since since the 1950s, since the 1980s, for for sure, there have been many, 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 many systems that were implemented, but they just don't work very well, you know, because they're kind of against the cultural structure. So, I, I understand, you know, I'm not trying to play the devil's advocate here, but uh, one of the papers that I am writing right now, I'm, I'm actually writing a paper right now that says after af after 30 years of exploration nothing has changed so uh, the title of my paper is after 30 years it is time to stop yeah that's the title so you know um, it's going to take it's going to take a top-down approach it's going to take someone you know at the very top to decide hey we need to develop the people and everyone knows that you know the the grassroots starting at the teacher level yeah there's I mean there's not really enough people implementing these type of strategies. It, it has to start at the top. So, sorry. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. David. We really uh, enjoyed this okay. wonderful, informative presentation. And we have a hand. Which actually, yeah, you, you gave us um, a complete picture about what is happening in Thailand nowadays and for the next 30 days as you have mentioned so far so thank you so much and if anyone uh, has a question feel free to ask Mr. David yep. is here to answer all our questions kindly of course um, so um, we have I? a hand raised Yes, yes, sure, sure. Go ahead. Hi, hi, David. Thank you very much for the useful knowledge. Uh, okay, I am in the education system. The big problems, I agree with you, uh, with everybody, is uh, the big problem for us is the teacher. 
You know, I hate most English language for more than 30 years. I myself, I hate most. But one day, I see that it is very important, it's very useful for us if we know more than two languages. Okay, so from now, since then, I, I study hard uh, uh, in English. But it's still, you know, still, right now, uh, I feel like uh, the government, okay, the government inject a lot of budget to improve English. Okay, I am uh, the Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Science at Pittsburgh University. We have a lot of budget, a lot of money to improve uh, English for our students, but we still not achieve the goal. So if, okay, I, I, I think, uh, David, you are, you are still in Thailand more, more than 10 years, right? If you are the government or you are the prime minister, oh my God. <laughs> please, you know, <laughs> please uh, advise or please uh, what is your policy because we spend a lot of money in Thailand for develop for uh, to, uh, uh, to improve uh, English for our students. But it's still, not, I, I can tell you that it's still not achieved the goal. You know, when uh, I teach English for lawyers, my student, you know, someone, if I ask them a lot, you know, what does it mean, what does it mean? I can't tell me, okay, say hi. They will run away, won't in, you know. They do not attend the class because they are afraid of answering my question. It, it, I think it's still in the, you know, in the society, in, uh, in the, the, you know, in the environment of our education. So, David, please, how can Thai government to oh. overcome this problem? Easy. One 